Welcome to this demonstration of ADS's PRISM. PRISM delivers near real-time information from your flow, level, and rainfall monitors. For this demo, we have set up a project containing a small number of locations, but the software will scale up to hundreds of locations. We've named our project ADS Anytown. When you launch PRISM, you are directed to the home screen. It's comprised of a map and these leaderboard tiles. The home page allows immediate insight into your collection system. You have easy access to data and device status. Let's take a look at the map. Notice the different symbols. The map shows each flow, level, and rainfall monitor with location and condition details. The location information is shown in the box as you hover over the location marker. Notice the color coding. The color of these location markers will change depending on the condition state of the location. Green indicates that the location is in a normal, non-alarming state. Red indicates a location in an active, alarming, but unacknowledged state. And once we acknowledge an alarm, orange will indicate that it's active, but acknowledged. Now let me display all of the locations right here, and you'll see another color designation. We have gray. This represents an inactive location. Now let me go back up here, and we'll display just the active locations. These are leaderboard tiles with system status on alarms, battery, data communication, and blockage predict. The tiles provide quick access to information. Let's take a look at the alarms tile. This displays the number of active but unacknowledged alarms. When you click on the alarms tile, the widget displays, and this allows you to manage alarms. The alarm widget indicates the type of alarm, the date and time of the alarm event, and the alarming location. In this case, it's Echo 36628. Now we can acknowledge the alarm by clicking on the red bell under status. The bell then changes to an orange color. The location marker changes to that orange color to indicate the alarm has been acknowledged. You can also click on the location to display the location properties card and select the graph link and view data for the alarming location. You will notice that throughout the software, you have the ability to filter information and view full screen and close. Let's view the full screen. And here's our filter. This filter allows you to view historical alarms and you can also download this report. So we currently have an active but acknowledged alarm. I can choose this filter and many more alarms will be listed. And this is a report that you can download. Let's take a look at the battery tile. The battery tile displays the number of critical and low battery locations. Click on the tile, it opens up this widget, and the widget displays the battery level for each of the locations. And you can sort on each of these columns. Notice the Buy Now button at the bottom. This directs you to the ADS online storefront to purchase replacement parts and full systems. The Data Communication Tile. This displays the number of locations that fail to populate data into PRISM. At this time, we have no failed schedule collects. If any locations displayed, the widget allows you to initiate an on-demand collect or a schedule collect. If the blockage predict feature is enabled for the project, you'll see information when you click on the blockage predict tile. Let me go to a project that has blockage predict turned on. And you see here that there is one location highlighted as a probable blockage. Blockage predict uses machine learning to learn the behavior and typical data pattern for each location. Then PRISM evaluates every location on a daily basis and looks for any upward trending depth anomaly. 
Prism compares that pattern to a library of thousands of cases of blockage patterns. If the location is a flow meter, the velocity data is also reviewed. Prism can discern between wet weather increases versus developing blockage patterns. Prism will tag the location within this widget with three colors and status. If the location is normal, things are good, no blockage, the location status is green. If there is a blockage brewing, Prism will tag the location with a yellow flag with a status of developing blockage. And if the location is surcharged, Prism will tag it as red, a developed blockage. Prism allows for the integration of GIS. So there's a layers tab. If you do not have GIS, you will still have a monitor layer. Notice the different symbols for the different monitor types. By clicking on the base map, you do have four available map layers. When you click on the plus sign, this allows you to add a composite location to your project or add a new location. Under Tools, the map is interactive in that you have access to individual meter configurations. Let's click on a location on the map. We click on the tools. It opens up the location card to display the location properties. And with appropriate PRISM credentials, you can edit the parameters, perform limited activations, view data, collect, and export the location properties. Now, before we leave the home page, let me show you how you can view data through this Quick Looks feature. In the upper right corner, you can pin this, click on a location on the map, and you see a view of the data in Hydrograph View, Scattergraph View, and below the Scattergraph is a presentation of the average percent full for the past week or other available date ranges. And then you can also click from here the location name and it takes you to the dashboard's location. So just from the home page, you have the ability to view system and device status. You have the ability to view data and also tap into your meter configurations. Let's take a look at the next tab, dashboards. The first dashboards is the custom dashboard. This allows you to graph multiple locations on one graph, both in hydrograph and scattergraph view. Now let's go to the dashboards locations. Notice that you can scroll through locations. Here you have access to more data. The default entities are depth, quantity, rain, and velocity. You can view data in hydrograph format and scattergraph, and below are tabular presentations of the data. Click on the date range to show the available date range and a selection of another time frame. You can also select other entities rather than the default. When you hover over a data point, the date time and values display in both hydrograph and the scattergraph. Upper right corner are these three vertical dots for settings. Select annotations to add on the hydrograph and scattergraph. Let's select the pipe height. If this is a view that you like, you can then save that configuration for that graph template. And later when you come back to dashboard's location, you can load that configuration. You can also export data from the location dashboard. Let me click on export. The date range and values are then exported and you receive notification of that completion. The exported CSV files go to the vault into a default folder named data export. And you can also print from location dashboard. For each location, as you move through the dashboards, you see a blue link. Click on this and you get details and some past day metrics. And there are past day metrics for uptime, daily summary, and max percent full. 
And underneath those, you will see a drawing of the pipe shape. Other things are an answer engine ability. If you need an entity that is not predefined in PRISM, you can create new ones. Under confirmations, you can enter field measurements and download a report of those measurements. At the location level, you can upload files such as photos, videos. Under advanced, the user can review and perform diagnostics readings on location meters. At the top right of the screen, you can click on edit and access the location card. The next dashboard is the notifications dashboard. There are two types of notifications. One notification is for the escalation of alarm events. These escalations are sent to the user by email and or text. A standard alarm notification is available for meter triggered alarms. The administrator can also set up an advanced notification based on conditions. This is called an answer notification. And then you have the notification of daily reports. An administrator can notify you to receive daily reports for battery and communication issues. The last notification is the schedule collect. You can schedule PRISM to call meters and collect data and populate PRISM. The reports tab provides tabular presentation of data. The daily summary provides minimum, maximum, and average values for the selected date range and the entity selected along with a report summary. You can download this report as a CSV file. The percent full report provides the average and maximum percent metrics for the past day and the past week. Now you can choose the filter and select a different time span. This report can be downloaded as well as a CSV file. This report is the uptime report. It provides data availability percentages for the past week but you can choose a filter to change the time span and entities. You can download this as a CSV file. The Vault. The Vault is a repository for files. You can create folders and you can upload and export files. Note that PRISM already has a default folder named Data Exports. Export allows you to export data as CSV files, just like from the location dashboard. But from the vault, you can export multiple locations and multiple entities. You can export as a CSV or an Excel file. Once you enter your information and export, the exported file goes into the data exports folder. Upload. Upload allows you to bring information into the vault from outside of PRISM. You can upload files, such as pictures, site reports, videos, location information. These are called the location XML files and CSV files. And note that you can upload 25 files at a time. Now let's go to the top of your screen. Additional customers are available from the dropdown list along with location groups. Depending on your credentials, you can edit your customers and location groups and use this feature to toggle between active and inactive locations. Under user preferences, you can set up your user information. If you are receiving notifications of alarms and let's say you go on vacation, you don't wish to receive any text notifications, you can simply turn that off and apply. Let's go back to user preferences. Under the user settings, you can select the view mode and the language preference. Also under your user, you can change your password if needed. And under help, there are various contact channels for support, including several how-to videos on the ADS website. This concludes the overview of PRISM.